Alrighty, welcome back. I'm your man, Bad Chad, and Queen Joey's on the camera. We got Nate in the house. Um, what's going on today is I have to finish the top of the doors, or I have to finish the roof so the door tops can be put on. Um, this is what's going on. Before Nathan cuts anything, Nathan has made a linkage for the, pe the gas pedal for the tricarbs. He's made a linkage right there. He's going to take it outside and paint it, and then when he brings it back inside and starts putting it together, we'll get him to explain what has happened there and how he made it, because he made it from that junk. <laughs> um, he asked me, do I have a cable, do I have anything, and I said, really, I haven't got anything. Searched all the cars, didn't really find anything that he really wanted, there wasn't anything. So I showed him a bunch of pieces that I had off an old Jaguar, and he took that mess and made that right there, which is beautiful. Uh, to fit that and make everything work after he gets it painted when he brings it in we'll we'll go over it and show you how he did it so you can do it uh, basically the reason i'm saying that is because something like that when you're making something like that it can be a point where it can stop you if you're not if you haven't done it a whole bunch and maybe this stuff that he's built will give you some ideas on your project or your ride um, you don't always need what you think you need sometimes you can build it from nothing and that's what he did Awesome. There's always different ways, right? Yeah, there's no. always different ways. So he's jumped the hurdle without even a horse. <laughs> Basically, that was awesome. So he's going to paint that stuff up and gear it up, and before he puts it back on, we'll take a look at it. I, I thought it was a, an engineer, engineering miracle, to be honest with you. When I looked at it, <laughs> it was like, <laughs> wow, like, holy smokes. I, yeah. Holy. Anyways, I've got this to, to do, and then we'll get back to that. On the car so far, we have the door gap done in the back. We have the gap here. We got that filled underneath there. If you want to come over this side, we got the holes filled on this side. Um, we've got the holes. If you're coming over this side, sweetheart, watch yourself. My queen Jolene got his coffee this morning. I love her so much. Filled all the holes on this side the exact same way. Just took the tape, put them pieces on there. Got the door gap on this side done. Got the hole filled for the for the gas door. We're not putting the gas door here no more. Cut the tail light opening. Got rid of that. We're not using that no more. On the trunk lid, I started filling the holes because I don't want any holes on there. You can see I filled this hole and this hole. Right here, we have a piece put in there. And I've spotted that on there. And the reason being is I'm going to show you. There's many different ways you could have done it. When you spot a hole like that and, you're, and you go through, it makes a mess on the other side. This is the trunk lid, obviously. And you, you can see it, so I, I did buff them two off. But you can see in here all the holes that I've covered. There's one, two, three, four, one big one, five, and then there's a couple bit down there. There's like six or seven different holes. And this is what I'm thinking. If, if I come in there and did that to each one of those how long would it take me and then i'd have to make another bigger hole and put that in there how long would it take me to make seven little pieces to put in there or to, or to weld them up so basically you'd have you know seven holes here there's a one big hole so you if you weld them all up then you'd have one two three four seven pieces you'd have to grind and it wouldn't look that good to me that's what i'm going for it wouldn't look that good and if I cut it out, then you would have a mess inside the trunk that you would see where I weld this piece in. What I've come up with, I just put one piece on top of it, cover them all, and I've got it laid in there. You can see where the trunk hinge or the latch was on there. It's kind of, it's down. It's in there a little bit. So that piece laid right in there nice. I do not feel like I have to weld that up solid um, to make it look like anything. It, this is covering all the holes, one piece glass that and it'd be over and I can do something from the other side I can weld it up completely um, I just feel like it's not necessary um, the hole down there I did weld up so you really have to think about it sometimes like if you're doing a firewall on a car if you've got 25 30 holes think about not welding them up think about making one piece to cover them all because when you weld them all up you are going to have a mess sort of it's going to look like a mess because you're going to have 30 different places that you're going to have to fill to make look nice. So for me, instead of doing seven pieces, I put one piece right over top, 
Nothing underneath looks bad inside the trunk lid. Uh, well, basically seam seal from the inside. It's over, it looks good, there's no mess. And it's faster than you would do it if you did six different times. Let's go for the top of the door. On the top of the door, um, I cannot, like what I'm thinking is square stock's gonna run down inside the door. We're gonna put some square stock down in there for a channel for a window to come up. Square stock down in there for a window to come up. So that's gonna hold the window. Then we're gonna weld a piece of square stock on the top, this shape here. So the window has somewhere to go. Cannot, cannot put the window in it and make it go up inside here because when it come up in here, I would end up breaking the glass if I opened the door. Same as up in here. I can't go up in here. If I open the door with the glass up, it would break the glass. So what I'm thinking about doing is a square stock down the side, a piece of square stock going up here that meets that, then the glass can roll up in that square stock. On the back side of the square stock, there would be a rubber or something there on glued onto this piece here so it would seal. Now that I have that idea going, what's what I'm this is what I'm gonna do. That door folds backwards. This is what I'm gonna do. I've got this opening here. I'm gonna close this opening up because I don't want it. It doesn't look good. Um, so I'm gonna run a piece of metal from here all the way around down to there. Right? And then we are going to cap it from the side so it looks good. So we'll have something like that there going on. You can see that piece there and then we'll cap it like that and then we'll have a nice piece going on so it looks good inside the car. Uh, it, what can I say? Um, it, needs, it needs to be finished there to make it look like anything. So that's what I have to do and that's what I'm going to do and I'm going to take you along with me. Let's do it. Uh, when I measured that, it gives me a two inch piece is what I'm thinking. I've got two inches from this edge here. I want to weld it on this edge. And I want to go over to this stuff right here. So I'm, I'm thinking a two inch piece is going to give me enough to do what I want to do. So I'm going to run this piece in here. And then I'll make a pattern of this shape here. And then I'll cap it going this way. Let's do it. Let's do it. Thanks for coming back, everybody. I really appreciate it. The shirt that I have on. People have been buying it like crazy. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Jolene has, has got the 50 Ford going on the back of a shirt with some cartoon characters of me and her in the back of it. Or uh, driving it. And uh, she's going to launch it soon. And um, if you enjoy it, you know where to get it. I want to thank you very much for the for the consistent support. And basically, if you're buying any of our stuff, you are supporting us. Thank you. Also, this car, uh, we're trying to, we're, we're, you know, we're going to go is, we're probably going to try to finish this car up, no doubt in my mind. Try to. And uh, if you want to see this car being built before what we're doing now, you can go on our other station and you can watch it because she puts it on right after um, what we're doing today. So what we're doing today will be posted and then after that you can go to the other station and you can watch it being built from a two-door. If you want to go to the other station, Jolene said there's, or I have noticed that someone said, where's the other station? How do they get to the other station, sweetheart? She puts the link in the description. So that's an easy way to get to So it. what do you do with the link? You just you click just on it? it. Just click on the link um, in the description. In the description. It's normally at the first comment under the video. Or it's underneath the first comment of the video. So you can just press on that. It'll take you to the other station. And you can see that car being built from what it was to it is now. And then you can follow the whole thing. Because I know that everybody has not seen that car. And... Um, if you want to watch it being built, you're more than welcome. We appreciate it. Let's cut this piece. We got a two inch piece there. Let's cut it.
going to take off the sharp stuff. When, when you're putting your, like your metal on your car, like I do, I do it all the time, I really do. When you put metal on the car, um, it's gonna be painted, it's gonna be primed, it's gonna be whatever. Um, it should be, oh, all your metal should be primed or should be sanded, all your metal. Every time you do something, you cannot put a piece in a car and then not sand it and then expect something to adhere to it. So, uh, and I do it a lot, I really do, is I um, put, a piece of metal in a car and then I do not I just leave it for a while and I do not sand or polish it and that's because when at the end at the end when I have it all welded up that's when I like to sandblast things because it makes the material um, scratched up and pitted up ready for primer uh, body fill fiberglass anything you want to do to it um, that sandblasting to me uh, preps that metal for anything that you want for me to go over and sand the whole car when I can just when I can sandblast it and get it ready that way that's the way I'd rather do it. If you're stripping the paint off and not sandblasting you have to make sure that you uh, get your metal prep for primer or anything that you're going to put on it. Sand it is what I'm trying to say. So sometimes I um, I don't I like to you know let's face it I got that ground off but you really can't tell like what it, what it's looking like. Uh, I like the look of just the, the sheet metal itself, but that there kind of deters, uh, not gives, it gives a, an optical illusion when you scratch it up like that. So that's sometimes why I leave it um, clean metal so I can see what it looks like. If we look on this top of the door here, you can see right here, this, I'm happy with all this, but right here it's a little bit down because of the damage that it had there. Filler, <laughs> that's basically how it's, how it's gonna get fixed. A little bit of filler on that, you're gonna smooth it off. If we come on to the other side, the other side come out a little bit nicer, in my opinion, because it did have no damage um, going there first. Now I can just run a nice little little bit over top of that, and we can go there. But make sure that you're sanding your metal. Um, just because I'm not sanding it um, is the reason, because I'm probably going to go out to sandblast or something like that. We are going to sandblast this car again, and the reason being is... I've got a lot of stuff on the inside of the doors that's not sandblasted. Inside here, all around there can be sandblasted. We're not going to try to clean that with no grinder or, or a wheel or something like that. We are going to sandblast it. Also, um, you've seen me weld up a lot of rusty cars. And the reason being is, when you take it inside and sandblast it, it cleans all around the welds nice. It cleans it all, what you're, what you're going for. Um, if I find if you weld it up after you sandblast it, um, it's still, that weld still needs to be cleaned nice. So I like to sandblast it before I do anything. It just makes it look so much better. I'm going to sand this before I put it on because it's going to be hard to sand it after I get it on. I'm feeling that's good enough to, you know, apply primer or body fill, sand it. Nate, anytime you start putting that on, you give us a holler, okay, buddy? Yeah, once that paint dries up a little bit, I'll be... Yeah, you just give us a holler. That's all. I just want to see it go on. That's all. I want you to see it. I've already seen it, but I want you to see it. I'll make it work. Then you can write in how good Nate is. They call you Nate the Great. You know that, do you, Nate? Oh, jeez. Oh, man, I told you. He said, what do you say? I'm not perfect, but I can perfect it. <laughs> right? I'll give it a go. I'll tell you. Give it a go, he says. Give Don't go. give me that. What? We'll Don't put that on me. Nobody wants that, do they, Nate? <laughs> nope. You can try. That's all we can say. I'm going to flop this ahead. 
And we want, I want this to, I want my mouse will bend it to try to make it fit. And that way there just makes it a little easier. Bend it this way, no problem. Try to bend it this way. <laughs> and that's where things get strong. When you take a piece of metal and you try to put it that way and try to bend it. If you had it like an inside sill, like this piece right here, this little piece right here, that's probably the strongest piece to, to, to that and that and that is that piece right there to, to try to bend that that way. Could be wrong, but could be right. Okay. Now, I guess basically the main thing on this is placement. I want to place it so it fits. <laughs> Probably a little bit long, but. Trying to make it fit good, that's all. Maybe get to length here, would be nice. There, there, there. Down some. Just want to get it up underneath here and see what kind of length I need. I'm going to cut it off a little bit. Oh, yeah. Hopefully not too much, but a little. Hope that wasn't too much. Are you drinking water while you're filming? You're a badass. No thanks, sweetheart. Yeah, let's turn this on. I bet you it's the fancy flavored water too, isn't it? It is. Yeah. Yeah, she <laughs> likes that, uh, what's that called? Um, designer water. That's the one. She likes that designer water. I think what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to plug it on the center first. We're not exactly. We're going to plug it on the center first because that's where I want it to fit first. And the reason I want it to fit center first because, as I do, I feel like it's the right place to go, the center. All right. I'm going to try it right there. One to hold it. So I got it. So now it's got it held. If I put another one on, I'm not going to be able to move it. Obviously, I say that over and over and over and over. But let's uh, let's get it in place. We got one. We can move it. Ah. Looks good on that end. Does it look good on that end? All right. Let's, let's put this on there. Let's try it. Let's see what happens. I just want to get it. Closing my eyes, just tacking it on, and I can get it. All right. Also, that has to go up in there nice. Let's see what we got going on over here. See if we got an issue. Right. I'm okay with that. A little bit of a gap right there, but that's okay. Knock it on right. Good. Good, good, good. Now let's get this in here and get this knocked off. Cut it off so we get it to length. I'm thinking. We'll go there, see what happens. Need a zip cut. Fridge is shrinking my clothes. <laughs> what? Fridge is shrinking your clothes? Yeah, the fridge is shrinking my clothes. Yeah. One of these days, I'm going to back away from the fridge. Beep, 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 beep. See what the happens. The fridge is so comforting now. It's it so is, comforting. isn't it, right? Yeah. Jolene's making me eat good now, she said. She got what what what'd she make me? She put something, she put uh, ham and cheese and hummus. 
What is hummus? Hummus. Tastes a little bit like dirt. <laughs> uh, watch your eyeballs be hurt. That sounded dangerous. That rattled my eardrums right quick, that did. <laughs> it sounded dangerous to me. Huh? It sounded dangerous to me. Did. Any bun hummus? No, that grunt. Yep. One more. Went it below the line a little bit. Just because I feel like once I get it up in there, we might be shy. Uh, nope. Not even a little bit. But I bet you if I do, push that a little harder. Uh, nope. Let's bang it in there. See? Put that in there and got shy. Just exactly what I said it was going to do. But, if you know me at all, I can fix it. With what? Honey, what would you fix that with? Oh. Huh? Potty fill, you say? No, it's bubble gum. Bubble gum. <laughs> you were like being bad today. Anyways, she said bubble gum, true. That's not true, boys. I probably, I'd probably go with the coat hanger. Just gonna tack that on there and get that tight knife now. Come down just a little bit. Nice. All right. So it won't be long, and we'll be on to the fiberglass and then that sort of stuff. It won't be long. And that's a good thing. Damn good thing. Nope, I want that there. Oh, great. Nice. Mm. Just said, one that in there tight. Just do this. Just gonna bang that in there so it's nice and tight. Because to be all honest with you, you probably run a little fill up around there, so you would never notice that. Just putting my wire exactly where I want to weld, and then I pull the trigger. Close my eyes. That's why I say, probably, no, that's why I say, anybody can do what I'm doing here. Let's, let's do it again. I'm gonna put the wire exactly where I want to weld. Look, I'm going to weld the wire weld right there. I got my distance that I want. I'm going to pull the trigger. I'm not going to move one diota. I'm just going to pull the trigger, close my eyes. There you go. Let's do it again. If that's the way you want to do it, if you want your helmet on, you're, you know, it is what it is. And the reason I probably haven't got my helmet on, probably trying to do it a little quicker than taking it off and on. That's all I'm doing, trying to speed things up. Anywhere at all to make it work for you. See, I got my knee underneath there, just pushing up anywhere at all to make it fit right. Put your wire where you want it. Pull the trigger. And be happy. something that has to be done it doesn't have to be done this way I mean you can do it any way you want to but I have to sort of finish off um, the inside of the car somehow so this is what I come up with It's like when Nate started doing the throttle, he asked me if I had any cable. Didn't have any cable to, for him to do that. 
So, what happens is, I show him the stuff that I have, <laughs> the junk that I have, and uh, he built from that. So, there's more than one way. Hook that throttle up, that's for sure. But to take a bunch of miscellaneous parts and make something is so gratifying. So gratifying to be able to take that junk there and make something. Or even take a car like we have here, <laughs> like it was a two-door, um, worth uh, probably not much to anybody, um, and make something out of it. So gratifying. Try it. You'll love it. It's always fun. Isn't it, Nate? Nice. Nice. Just stretch, stretching that a little bit there. Trying to get it tight as it can, and then we'll push it in tight, and then we'll nail it on tight. Just going to put my helmet on for a second. We're going to buzz in between each one of those, make it a little bit tighter. And then we're going to make the next piece. Then we're going to make the next piece. Good. To me it does. It's good to me. Now what's gonna happen is you gotta take back and take a look at this thing because it's custom all the way. There's no there's no book telling us what to do, but you can see as I look in there that that's leaned down like that. Some in some places that's leaned down like that. I want it in there straight, so I'm gonna bang on it a little bit to make it where it needs to go. look at it I want to look in like this I don't want to see something hanging down I want this up and around there looking pretty good that looks good get that up there
put a hand on it. If I take my hand and pull up on it as I'm banging it, it won't go so boingy. It'll help me a little bit. Then when it's all beat and bruised up, okay. it's never good when it's all boingy. No, it's all boingy. Now, now that's not finished yet. I got this piece going in here, a little bit here. Okay. Okay. Now. Move it right there. I'm going to weld that again. Closing my eyes. Just want that up in there a little bit more. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. So now when the door top goes in, the door will swing in and the door top will be right, you know, it'll probably a door gap away. But we can at least, at least we can glue a rubber on this part here and then come down around. And then when the door top is on, it can go up against it. Um, what has to be done now is I have to, I can't leave it like that it's sharp and it's not good looking. Um, I don't want to leave it like that. Now I have, you can see I put the, other piece on, put the other piece on the other side. Now I'm going to take this piece that I got on there, I got on that side. Now I'm going to take a piece here and go from here to there, all the way around, to what, all the way down around here. I want to weld it on this part, up to here. So I'm going to do a little bit of cutting, a little bit of, a little bit of everything, to be honest with you. Let's go down and get the zip cut. Um, I don't know if I need the zip cut right this second. I need to make a pattern for that is what I need to do. Also, I'm going to have to cut some of this back uh, to make sure it's flush. I don't want it out too far anywhere, to be honest with you. I'm going to have to maybe do some markering. We've got the same... I guess we made it two inch because we didn't want to make it too small. That's what we didn't want to do. And it fits nice up front. Um, you know what I'm trying to tell you. A little less has to come off places and a little more another because that feels really good there. And that's why we went two inch. Okay, so we got that, that, that. Doing a bit of guessing. We'll straighten it out. See, we got a little tiny bit off here. You can see how wide that is there. We just want to bring that to the edge of that. And back here, if you want to come take a look. See, we're, we're there. I want, I want to close that off there. We'll weld that up. We're not going to do it with bubble gum. We're going to do it with a coat hanger. No doubt in my mind. And that's the, the that's the areas that I get, you can really like, you know, that's the areas where the coat hanger trick has come in for me uh, is because that, that cut right there is, is not perfect. Um, and it's getting, so now I don't care if it's perfect because I can weld it up with it with no, no qualms, no worries, no nothing. Uh, if you come up front here and take a look, this there, I've only got a little tiny bit I'm going to take off because it matches up nice with that one there. Like, so th that's why I made it two inches wide because there's a difference of thickness in here 
that I need and up to here. And we just want it to make it look good so it matches each side, I, I'm what I'm thinking. Up here, to be honest with you, it doesn't look too bad. I'm going to have to be careful. I don't think I'm going to sand that much off. And I think I'm going to sand it off instead of cutting it off because I can see in here where I'm going and what I'm doing. Uh, da, da, da. I want to make a pattern though first. Let's do this. We're going to make a pattern. I have not got any Bristol board, so I'm going to run the paper. I'm just going to have to go in here and get it. have not sanded down uh, the pieces yet. They're just covered in clear coat. So what I'm gonna do here in the next couple days, I'm gonna grab some 600. I'm gonna flatten down the clear uh, because of the metal flake that I put on, I'll flatten it down. Then we'll put three more coats of clear on it and we'll be done. Basically, just want to hold that on in one place and see if I can't get a pattern. All right, I'm going to do it. The reason I say I'm going to do it is because it keeps falling on me. All righty. And we have our pattern, a pair of scissors. I'm just gonna take my marker. I'm gonna draw this off here. I wanna make sure I draw it off here. I'm gonna do. Better the pattern, better the piece you're going to make. I could work at a sweatshop, cut no material, oh, cut no patterns, couldn't I, baby? Huh? Where they make sweat clothes. All right. Now I have this piece. And that's the shape I have up inside that window. Now we're going to take a marker. I'm going to take a look in here. Yeah, it's going to have to be a different size. I'm, what I'm going to do is, I'll cut the, I'll give, make a two inch strip, I'm thinking all the way around there, just by eye. I'll set it up in there, where it fits the top nice, and then I'll come again and trim the bottom, because there's different areas, if you come on this side, you, or you just look right here. You can see on this side here, look how close it is, right? You can see how thick it is there. And you can see, well, I'm not sure where I'm going to weld it to up there, but you can see how there's a difference. I've got this, this shape right here, this pattern, that's fine. Um, what we'll do is we'll make our pattern fit this, and then we'll come back in and we'll trim the excess off to fit that again. Because I, it's pretty hard for me to get that pattern on the top because I can't hold the paper and, and do that at the same time. So we're just going to do this. I got these here all greased up. I'm probably going to bolt these here on now. All right. Let's go over to the old okay. Hudson Terraplane. Oh, and we're going to... Let's, let's do this because I want you to see what's going on here. So this is the Hudson Terraplane that Nathan has put the engine in, the transmission in, uh, made the tunnel for it, and all that sort of stuff. Now he's on to the gas pedal. Has to be done. It won't run without it, will it? No. <laughs> no. So go for it. Look, there was just a piece of angle iron. I notched out and made around for the pivot to go on. These and pivots were on that, what would you say that was off of? Jaguar. Jaguar stuff. Jaguar stuff. This one was longer, the shortness went up. You might have to put that on to show, explain yep. it. I'll but it basically, on. he's got one, how many? These are greasable, actually. Are these cold cams? 
uh, pivot points, pivot points or whatever. But he's yeah. used these things um, to get going where he needs to go, and that's that gas pedal to pull the throttle linkage on them carburetors. Yeah. We used the original gas pedal on the floor, and even on the original, with the original ones, that's actually the original one. They just had a pin. There wasn't a bushing or nothing. So I'm going to grease it when it goes together. Actually. So if you can take a look at this, he made this. Like he yeah. made this pin. This original. It he made different. it. Made it longer and did a. But then uh, the top one, this was a, this was a join off one of them. Actually, it was one of the bends right off of that, actually. Okay. Worked out pretty good, so I'll bolt, <laughs> I'll bolt it together here now. Yeah. And, and then there's another camshaft there that he used. Yeah, this one actually goes to the carburetors. Another greasable fitting. But originally, so these, this one here is adjustable. You can take this apart. You can shorten and lengthen that rod. Yeah, we'll show that. That was a good one. There's three or four of them. We'll, we'll show that, that here so. in a second. So basically... So that was a pretty um, good deal there. That he was. went from the carburetor. He needed the, this here was actually the engine lift, a factory Chevy engine lift bracket, and I just cut it off and added to it. And these these bushings, they actually bolt in and bottom out. So they go right in and, and bottom out, and they spin on the pin instead of the whole bolt and stuff turning. We'll show you that here when, in a second. When it's tight here. But i get this one here started in there. I'll tighten that other one up first. Like this sort of stuff, in all honesty, I think a lot of people will probably be looking in their um, hot rod catalogs to find linkage. Um, and, and, and I'm sure you can buy it all in there, can't you? Well, on that catalog. when it comes to this shop, I'd rather make it than buy it, to be honest with you, if we can. And uh, Nathan has kind of blown my mind with what he done here. On there. And I put a lock washer on it, but it does go right in the bottom out so it stays on the pivot point at all times in the end. But the pedal was a bit of a more trickery to get in there, but we oh got my her. goodness, get her. And the reason being, in the pedal is trickery there. is because we had to open the tunnel up for the bigger transmission on the back of this 305. Like it's, it's bigger, so the tunnel had to get bigger. And the tunnel was made as small as it could be made because the transmission was in there and we knew the distance that we could go. I'll just leave that one loose for now. Come back so basically he's got, he went from the carburetor to the back of the intake so it moves back and forth. Like he, like he yeah. has something there that goes back and forth. And then we had to step forth. over to the gas pedal because the gas pedal's over this way farther. So that's what this bracket's for down in behind. Show, show him what when you I did drop there. everything, yeah. When I drop everything here. That's how it goes. Yep. So he took a piece of angle iron. That's a piece of angle iron. There's a piece on their floor there with all that mess. He made that little bracket to bolt on the back of the transmission. Does that bolt on the back yep, of the transmission? Yeah, it bolts on the, with the bell housing bolt here. It's quite something else what he did here. Like I'm kind of like, well, when I, mean, I seen it yesterday, I was If like, anybody's got a little time and, and ingenuity, they can figure it out. Right? Once I get my hand down in there, it's in a tight spot. This one is. Oh, yeah. And like Nathan said, it could be done many different ways, but this is what we had. Yeah. And he made it work. And I, I like it better than a cable, to be honest with you. Like watching paint dry here, turning that bolt in there. But That's fine. <laughs> That's fine. This is what it is, I guess. This is what it is. It totally is. It's in a tight spot to get out. That's all. But now, to get so. In order for this to work, straight up, he said he's got holding on top of the engine here. This little cam here, I, I, I don't want to call it a cam, but this little bracket here, see how that's right there? That, that pulls straight back. Well, that's that means that one's got to pull down to make that pull on that carburetor. So now he's got a bracket, he made a bracket down in the transmission, which pulls down on this. It's quite something. How's that straight up and down there? Just a bit. That's engineering genius at its best, to be honest with you, like it really is. You don't have to tighten it in with everybody. Right. So now he's got, see how he's got this cam here. This needs to be, show him how that works here, Nate. You just pull this one here, he's gonna pull the... See how that pulls that? That means that's gonna be pulled down. So now he's got, he built a bracket on the back of the transmission with another cam, pivot point, pivot point okay. which he'll show you here in a second. You Where's want a piece of the rod? I want that in there. We need to set them here. I lost my shit on this one. 
Where's the other one at? Oh, right there. Oh yeah, right beside. Look at this thing here now. So originally, the original ones had the pin in it too, so it didn't even have a bushing in it. So right from factory, but if you know, it'll still watch this now. Deed. Watch this now. He says. Oh well, it's quite something. Yeah, we gotta get that bottom one in there. So I don't know if you can see it better here, sweetheart. Or well, of course I dropped that nut too. Yep. There's another drop. See how that's down on that can? He better put a can down on that transmission. He's got a little bushing or a little piece that goes in there. Yeah, once I get it back in place here, this one's right. And tricky. Then that one goes up to the. This one in here first, maybe it was. In there first, and then this one goes in here. Get up here. You can tell to make it. I mean, it's hard to put it together, let alone make it. Yeah, it's a. Uh, get in there. Now he has to put that one down in there. It's a good there. Come on, another one slides right in. Got a lot of paint on it, Nate. Yeah, a little bit of paint on it. Or it could be turned, so I don't know, whatever. It will go in there. Ah, sure. oh, geez, just a minute. Gotta hold your tongue right by. Yeah, I'm gonna hold the tongue just right. Just right. And then, right, see that? Not that I dropped. So now that, that he has that one in there. Right there. He's going for he's not, but that. Now you can see the other pivot point. That one goes there. And then right from factory, they had these little spring washers. And the cotter pin, that went over it, and the, and the cotter pin just goes down is it a good Is it a good idea? Well, yeah, it just goes, it fits there. It's fantastic it's what idea. it is, right? Like, well, I'm just saying, like, they've changed so many things over time. Is that a better one, or is that a... Yeah, it's a pretty good idea. It keeps a little pressure idea. on it, right? Ah, I see what you're saying. Once that's in there... With just a flat washer, there'd be no pressure. Right. And with that thing they made, there's pressure on your cotter pin. Yeah, and that's right from factory. Like. So he's just putting the cotter pin on that right now, just so yeah. it don't come off. Yeah, it's not in there perfect yet. We'll just set that one in there, and then the next one, I'll bring the foot pedal out. Cause you it can imagine the making that. <laughs> so, and this was factory on the foot pedal, where they had, this goes in the foot pedal there like that, but on the back of it, they had this spring... Just a factory part there with another color pin. Did you paint your nails before you come to work? No, that's that paint outside. <laughs> yeah, sorry, man. That's all right. But uh, we did have to move the piece there for that. And I got to steal this light. So there is a bracket on the, the bottom of the gas pedal yep. that he welded to the floor of the car. You can Actually, you can see right here, sweetheart. See that little pin down there? A little pin down there that just pulled out. That's the raggedy welded on the floor. So we mm -hmm. This this is pretty awesome. And then another cotter pin will go in there. And see me. And then we got. Come come here for a second. And as you see over here, you put uh, the gas pedal runs to this piece over here. We'll put another. You can see where you put that in spring right in there. See where your fingers are. You put that in the top pin there. And then it. That gives us quite something else, to be honest with you. So he's got a a pivot point here, a pivot point down there, and it's when you press down the gas pedal, it pulls the carburetor. It's quite something else. It doesn't look too. Yeah, it doesn't look too bad sitting in there. Right? Oh, it's like, awesome! Like, it's, like we've got some clips and stuff to go on there. Like, that's quite something else. <laughs> right? Huh? So, and then it fits good in here, and it's the original pedal. And if you're not amazed. I am. It is what it is, right? It, it makes it, it work anyway. Yeah, it's absolutely awesome. Like, it's absolutely awesome. So, we're going to get a Sean, your better spring there. And I'm probably going to put another spring down there, too. I'll probably put two springs on, probably. But, I, uh, I looked at it yesterday, and I was thinking, wow, from that, from all that stuff there, uh, to make that. Also, we're, we're, what we were talking about, or what Nathan was talking about, is these little shafts here. This one come off? Yeah, that one there should come off. This yeah. is on Jaguar stuff, older Jaguar stuff. It comes apart, stuff. and it's got just a, a friction, uh, a friction fitting, I yeah. guess you call it. A, you you tighten slide it, up, it on, and then and tighten you it adjust up. it back and forth. So that one on the carburetor is adjustable. We can set that up and down, which will actually set the pedal up and down the same way, right? So this stuff, like this thing here, like this thing here, can be adjusted. Like this piece here, slid on. It can. It's got a bolt system. It can be adjusted. Yeah, yeah. And and I think even the other one can be adjusted. I'm not down sure. Down there on the pedal a little bit. The, yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Excellent. Awesome. Where are we at for time? 50. 50. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this piece of paper off. We'll make a piece of metal, exact same thing as this. Then I'm going to set it up in here and I'm going to make it fit the top where I want it to go. And then I'm going to come in here with my marker and trim off the bottom because I can't get the top pattern because I, I can't get to it yet. So that's what I'll do. I'll make it fit at the top and then I'll trim the access off the bottom because it's smaller there in the front than it is in the back. And that's all there is to it. All right, everybody. Thanks a lot for coming back. I really appreciate it. I'm just trying to close off the inside of the doors. I've got a little bit more to do. And then uh, you come back tomorrow and you'll get to see what we're doing. How's that? Uh, thanks for coming back. Thanks for buying the gear. I really appreciate it. Jolene's soon going to launch another shirt with the 50 Ford on it. And if you want to see it being built, go to the other station. Go to the description and press on, press on the link. And it'll take you right there. And then you'll get to see what's going on. We're just playing. Every day we're playing one on, on the, you know, every day at 6. And then after that you can go on and watch when we did it from before. So you know exactly what's going on. You're probably thinking... Why is there such a big weld going on there? Well, if you watch the other station, you will find out why that is there. Have a great day. Come back tomorrow. We'll be here. Great job, Nate.